Hey guys, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can hack your mini SNES. Now I'm going to just kind of show you the software that you used to use it. Now I did a video last night and if I can get it here. Now you can see here the way that I've got it set up. I've got I've got all the games listed in folders and you know like a b c all the way through and i've got the original games in the top directory so you would have the top directory of the original games and then you would have all these other games you can see blazing sky blues brothers and all that so the the software that i use to do that is called hackchi or hackchi 2 and the first video that i did about hacking the mini snes i says that you should probably wait and the reason i was saying that is because over the last week or so, there's been, you know, quite a few versions of this and they are updating it a lot. The good thing is that it's not that hard. It's a lot easier than I thought it was. I was talking to Evil Gage, one of my subscribers, and he was explaining that it's not as complicated as you think it is. There's a few guides out there that make it more difficult than it needs to be. You know, if you follow the guide, they've got you installing Python and all that kind of thing. You don't need to do that. So here's what you need to do. You need to get your mini SNES, you need to get um, the USB cable, and you need to plug it into your computer. One thing I will say about that, use the original USB cable, uh, or use a really good one. The reason I'm saying that is I've got this USB micro B cable that I've used before. It's actually quite a good one I got in a pack of cables. It's good. I've tested it before with my phone, and it is a good cable. But for whatever reason, it wasn't working with the script. So when I used the original cable, the one that came with the mini SNES, everything worked well. So when I, I downloaded the software, you unzip it. This is what you'll get. And you open up the software called Hackchi. Now you can see all of the games listed down here. Now when you first start, it isn't listed like that. You've only got the original games. And the way this is set up is really really good because what you've got here is the software will actually keep all the original games in this folder they've got it separately and if you for whatever reason for example if you don't like street fighter 2 you don't like star fox you can just unclick these and then the next time you synchronize it it will remove it from your mini snes so imagine this was the first time that you've turned on your mini snes and connected it what you would need to do is dump the kernel now it's, I can't do that because I have already did that. It's saved here, kernel SNES. I took another back of, backup of it here, just to be on the safe side in case there was something wrong. I've, at least I've got a backup of it. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about the directories in a second. Um, so what you need to do is dump the kernel, and it will give you instructions as to what you need to do. And essentially what you need to do is, you've got your mini SNES, you will plug in the cable, you will hold reset and then you'll power it on. When you do this for the first time, you will then have to install a driver and all you do is click install driver and it will load up a little um, like DOS window and it will install it, install it for you. I can't show you that because it's not letting me because I've done it before, but it's very, very simple. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is when you've loaded this up for the first time, go to dump kernel. Then once you've done that, then you can go to add games. And when you've done that, you can see here, add more games. It's coming up. Add more games there. So I'll go through and do that. And you can see down here, once you've added games, you can remove them if you don't want them. You can see there that um, I'll delete that one because it was actually a, a double. There was a few more that I decided to remove. I'll delete these ones. So that's away from the list. Try and keep it clean. Now, these are just the games that I've got here, and what you can do is synchronize it to um, to your mini SNES or your mini NES. This software will work with, where we got it here, uh, console type will work with the NES Classic Mini or the Famicom Mini, which is the Japanese version, or the SNES Classic or Super Famicom Classic. So, all versions of the Nintendo Classic consoles. Now, this synchronized button F5 here is the same as clicking here. So one thing to note is um, um, when you do that dump kernel thing, 
when you you know you dump the kernel and it's essentially just to make sure that you back up that original file you will find a backup online but it's still worth doing when you do that for a few times it wouldn't work i was pushing reset i was powering it on it wouldn't work but the third or fourth time it worked so if it doesn't work the first time don't be worried all you have to do is you know plug it out again plug it back in turn it on and it will work so i'm going to show you what uh, you need to do um so what i'm going to do see i don't need that i don't know what game that was what i'm going to do is just download a uh, add another game to my mini snes and i'll show you how you know i've got to set up i'm going to add more games to it and you should be able to see i've used 186.7 megabyte i've got 233 games so this is just a gaming folder i've got on my computer and that was the backup i was talking about this folder snes drums for snes mini this these are all the games i've decided to add to my mini snes it's just so that i can easily go back and see which ones i've selected and these are all the other games so what i essentially did was i went to my backup i went this is like all the snes games more or less there's about a gigabyte or so 1.02 gigabyte of of snes roms uh, but you're only allowed, you know, kind of up to around 300 megabyte of games. So what I did was copy the whole folder to here, and then I just picked uh, and you know what games I wanted. So if I go to gaming, SNES ROMs for mini SNES, right? Okay. So just so that I've got, you know, it's just the way that I've organised it. You can do it any way you want, but you just can't have to pick, say, 200 games. Now, if you select by size, you will see. There's games at 4 meg and they go down to 2 meg, 1.5 meg, 1 meg, all the way down to half a meg. So what games do I not have so far? Well, there's Super Mario RPG, I wouldn't mind that. Rise of the Robots, Kirby Dreamland 3. Um, I've not added Donkey Kong because it was part of the original games. Breath of Fire 2. Um, you know, I'll forget all those, so we'll just pick one just now. Let's just pick one so that I remember. Final three, Final Fight 3, right. So I'm going to put that in here. That's me in the folder. It, you can organise any way you want, but I just wanted to keep it in the folder, so I've got it all um, organised. So, um, I'll go into the folder. Now, you can select as many games as you want. I'm just picking one game here, but when you do it, you'll probably be selecting hundreds of games once you've organised it all. So I've got Final Fight 3, Processing Games, there we go. Now you can see there's no box art. If you select Google, it will go and find other box art, Final Fight 3 there. There's, it looks like it can, uh, there's lots of different, different versions of it that you can get, Final Fight 2. I've actually got a backup already. Um, see what I've got here, Retro Games, SNES, Box Art, Final Fight 3, where are we? I've got it here somewhere. Um, there we go. Right, so that's the cover I've got. So I'm going to pick that one, Final Fight 3. There's other options here as well. You've got Publisher. Sometimes the names aren't right here. You can change the name. You can change whether it's one player, two players, not simultaneously, two players simultaneously. You might find some of this information is wrong, like the release date is wrong. Um, Like here, Zoop, release date, 1900, Publisher, unknown. They just, I mean, all this information is irrelevant to me. Once you've added all the games that you want, you have to synchronize it with your SNES. And it tells you what to do. Connect your SNES via the USB cable. This time I don't have to push the reset button. I just turn it on. And it will say install the driver if it's not installed yet. I shouldn't have to do that because I've done this before. Should hopefully come on. It's just beeped there. You know, the Windows beep. I don't know if it's coming through in the video. I don't think so. I think I've disabled computer sounds. Um, so that's just beeped. And now it's going to upload the games. And what it's going to do is add... Uh, Final Fight 3. That's it. That's all you have to do. It's very, very easy. Now, I kind of briefly talked about that, that um, I've got it set up as folders. You, know, you can see there I've got, you know, A, B, C, D all the way along. Now, you can set it up a different way. And I'll show you how you do that just now. When this stops. But you can see it doesn't take that long to synchronize it and you know you can go away and do anything that you want um 
Okay, so now that has been synchronized. It now says 200, 304 games. I've got 108.4 megabytes used of 238 megabytes. So, you know, I've got another, what's that, 40, 50 megabytes that I can use. Uh, so I've got another 50 megabytes of games that I could use. So I could go through this and add another 50 megabyte worth of games. You know, and I'll just have to pick and choose which ones uh, I use. So these are all the games I've not added yet. And I can go through and just pick the ones that I want. Lots of games that I need to add. Um, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of options here, but you don't really need them all. Uh, the one thing I would say that you need to check is pages folder structure. So this is something that you need to pay attention to. My idea was to just put all the games in a row and just have them all in alphabet, alphabetical order. The problem is you can't do that. There might be some way of doing this in the future. There's no way of doing it just now. What you have to do is disable page folders and that will give you all the games in a row. The problem is when you do that, you get an error message. You get an error message saying C8 won't switch on and it will tell you to refer to Nintendo.com. When you search for that error, it will say that uh, lots of people were saying that it's basically because there's too many games in the folder and it's something to do with the cache. So what they people recommended, the people that I saw online talking about it, they say to keep games to about... 40, 40 to 50 games per folder and you can see these are all the different games that you can split it up like you can do automatic you can put the original games in the root which is the 21 games that you get with the mini snes so the ones that you came with and automatic and subfolder so that would maybe put the first 30 40 games in one folder then the next folder what i've chosen to do is put all the original games in the root and then have a folder and then when you click into that folder you've got a to z of all these extra games so you can see the original games there and then all of these ones will be under A to Z. So under Z, I'd have those three games. Under Y, I'd have those two. And that's how I've got it set up. There's nothing else you really need to do. So I know this has been a long video, but I did want to kind of cover everything so that you can kind of go over it and make sure you've done everything right. But when you come to this for the first time, it isn't as complicated as a lot of people are saying. What you need to do is download HackG2 from this website. I'll leave a link to that there. And you go to kernel and you dump kernel and you make a backup of your mini SNES, right? Once you've done that and you've installed the driver, etc., you just follow the instructions. Once you've done that, all you have to do is add all your games. So you go to your SNES ROMs and you add all the games that you want. For example, I'll probably add Prince of Persia 2. Add all the games that you want. And then for each game, you need to go through and Google or browse through and get the box art. Unfortunately, this is something that you need to go through one by one. That's probably the most time-consuming aspect of doing this. And once you've done it, though, it's done. You can see I've switched on my mini SNES and all the graphics are there. They're all there already. That's because I did it before. But that's all you have to do. You dump the kernel to make a backup of your original drive. And then you add the games and then you synchronize it with your SNES. That's it. It's very, very simple. The only thing, again, I would say is make sure you've got the folder structure that you want. If you don't have the folder structure that you do want, then you just go back and you change it. And you change it to something that you want. And you've got here as well, controller hacks. You can change it. Um, select reset, the reset button combination. So you can select a different uh, combination to reset, um, you know, the controller. You know, how to reset the system so that you don't have to go over and push reset. There's other things like that you can do. But I would say that that's something you can do after you've set it up with all the games. It's not something you have to worry about at the start. You can change the language, etc. as well. So the other thing you can do is flash the original kernel. So if for any reason you want to revert it back to the way that it was originally, what you need to do is go in and uh, flash the original kernel. And this will flash it so that it's good back, it goes back to the original version with the 21 games and you don't have all those extra games. If that's what you need to do because you're returning it to the shop, then you can do that. It's very, very simple. Now, I hope I've simply, I know I have been on this video for about 15 minutes or so, and I have maybe talked a little bit longer than I should have, but I wanted to break it all down just to explain how it all works. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has been easy to follow. But really, if you want to hack your SNES, the, simple, the process is quite simple. Go to HackG2, download the software so that you get this folder, open up Hatchy. this will return this, dump the kernel, add your games, synchronize the games, 
uh, add the game, sorry, add the box art for each game and then synchronize the games and then plug your SNES in downstairs. Do make sure that you don't disable folders because it will cause an error. But remember, I am using version 2.21C. Um, it looks like 2.21D is out. I believe, yeah, 2.21D is, I thought that was the one I downloaded. Um, so there are new versions coming out and they are adding more features each one. So please do bear that in mind. Over time, there's going to be tweaked. It's going to be improved. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have found this useful. And if you'd like to, you know, see what this looks like in action, check out my video link to this as well. And you can see me playing lots of different games and showing you how it all works. There's me playing Mortal Kombat on it. Be sure to ask a question below, guys, if you're unsure about anything, and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.